Hi, my name is Jim Wickenheiser. Welcome to ISC 2020. I'm with Silicon Core. We are a manufacturer of high-end LED displays. So over here, we have a 1.2 millimeter wall. It boasts the, our Lisa encapsulation, which is a patented encapsulation technology. So it's durable, it's water resistant, it's touch ready, and it also has other technology that we have uh, patents on, which is uh, our ZAC technology and our common cathode technology, which allows this beautiful bright display to run at really cool temperatures. It's also very power efficient, as is all of our walls, as are all of our walls, and uh, it's, it's brightest and most beautiful in the industry. This is very big. Yeah, this one right here is a 220 inch 1.2 millimeter display. 1.2 millimeter, what does that mean? This is the that is the, That's the spacing in between the pixels. Is that pretty really good, 1.2? So 1.2 is, right now that is our top seller. Uh, and so in terms of uh, the market, you fine pixel pitch is anything really under two millimeters. And then you get into the more ultra fine pixel pitch where you get under one millimeter. And we'll show you a couple of those in a second. How much is the price for one of those? Uh, if you want to know, you can yeah. contact one of our sales guys. But uh, ballpark, you're probably looking, you know, budgetary pricing wise, you're looking at around 100,000 US. And so this is indoor? Correct. That's right. So uh, most of the displays we do are indoor. We, we cater to high end corporate. Uh, we're also into control rooms, we're into high end retail. So it's really versatile uh, in terms of its applications. This is pretty much 4K, right? This is a 4K display, that's correct. And uh, how often do the dead pixels appear? So dead pixels happen uh, usually in the early life of a display. And so uh, what we find is that we're able to, through our burn-in process, we're able to uh, get most of those out of the display. But like everything, nothing's perfect, even if you're in the low parts per million failure rate, which we are, that still means that there's, you know, there's several million pixels on the display. So that means there's going to be some, but those usually occur very early in the life cycle. Can you swap those out? I'm sorry, what was that? Is it possible to swap the bad parts out? Uh, swap like other tiles? Yeah, so we have PCBs that are roughly that big. And so even if you do have a pixel that goes out, you know, we're able to swap very small in terms of modularity. So. All right. Yeah. And uh, right next to this one, you're showing some micro LEDs. That's correct. So this is a 0.83, it's our Lotus product. Also has the Lisa encapsulation. And so the 0.83, I mean, that means the pixels are literally less than a millimeter apart, 0.83 millimeters apart. And so without this encapsulation, this becomes a very fragile uh, display. And so with our encapsulation, it's very robust, very tough. People might bump into it with backpacks or purses, and it's not a problem. And you also have some partners showing even yeah, the spec of this? Indeed. So uh, over in the Lang booth, they have a much larger version of this. And so I would definitely encourage you to go over there and take a look, because uh, it's they it, it's a beautiful display. So they have a larger of the 0.83 millimeter. Correct. Which is uh, defined as a uh, what kind of uh, micro LED definition does it have? I mean, are, are there peop other competitors that have even smaller? There are some that do smaller, but there's several um, <clears throat> there's several issues that come up when you're trying to do uh, pixel pitches this small. Uh, the primary issue you run into is heat, and so uh, other folks that do have a smaller pitch than this, they will typically have their displays roped off because they don't want you to get too close because they're too hot. Now this one, it's, it's a little bit above ambient, and yet we still get very high brightness, we get this fine pixel pitch, and uh, we get incredible performance because we make our own driver chips. We're based in Silicon Valley, and we're actually the only manufacturer in the whole industry that makes our own driver chips. What, is, what does the driver chip do to the display? So it does several things. That is really the heart of the system. So most manufacturers uh, basically integrate other people's components, whereas uh, Silicon Core, we buy our LEDs like everybody else, but the driver chip is actually what converts um, all the digital signals into 
uh, the, the electrical signals that need, are needed to actually light the LEDs. And so we have a very high bit depth um, driver chip highest in the industry. Uh, we've got patents around that as well. And we've also got uh, our ZAC technology, which enables us to have an incredibly high dynamic range. So what's the mid depth you have? So our driver chip is actually capable of mid-teen um, bit depth. Now most 16? people- 16? That's in the neighborhood, we'll go with that. Some of that's internal proprietary, but, um, but most people are only able to feed us at most 10 bits. So we handle 10 bits with no problem at all. And we can do 12, we can go beyond that, but finding content and finding video processors that can actually drive that is actually the bigger problem for us. So uh, you're in the Silicon Valley. Yes, we are. And how long time have you been doing this kind of, this kind of product? Uh, so we as a company uh, started in 1997 but at the time we weren't in the LED display space. So at the t we've actually probably owned Silicon Core stuff in the past and had no idea. We had a very large market share in uh, the driver chips for DVD RWs actually. And so if you've owned an optical drive at some point in your life, you probably own some Silicon Core chips and just didn't know it. Um, that said, we recognized that optical drives were gonna be limited in terms of their lifetime, so we pivoted and we started making uh, driver chips for fine pixel pitch LED. And so we were the first in, in, first in the world to come out with a 1.9 millimeter, uh, sub two millimeter display, which we came with a 1.9 millimeter. And then we were first at 1.5, first at 1.2, first underneath uh, one millimeter at a 0.95. I'll show you the 0.95 in a minute. But we've always been an industry leader and industry technology pusher. Uh, micro LED is a big trend also, everybody's talking it about that. Is. Who's going to make the best micro LEDs? Well, we oh, are, of course, but uh, the, the reality is there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace in terms of mini LED versus micro LED. There's a lot of stuff labeled out there that's mini LED, or it's labeled micro LED, it's actually mini LED, but here's the truth. They're all, it's all on a continuum, right? And so the reality is, is that it's all sub one millimeter product at this point. And so the industry is kind of gelled around calling everything micro LED. That's fine, it is what it is. But the truth is, is that that terminology will take us well down towards the bottom end of one millimeter, sub one millimeter. And, you know, the benefits, you get uh, a much, higher resolution display and a smaller area. Uh, but some of the drawbacks, if you can't control the heat, it's gonna be a problem. So. I thought those ropes were because they were uh, not so proud of their uh, pixel pitch. No, I, you know, the pixel pitch on a lot of those, they're actually, they're impressive pixel pitches, but um, it's, it's a lot of times it's a heat. Sometimes they don't want you touching the display because if it's not encapsulated, it'll be a very fragile display at that pixel pitch. Um, you know, and I'm sure they all have their own specific reasons for wanting to, to put a rope up. But, you know, from our experience, you know, we don't put ropes up because we drive very cool. In fact, we've even got a power meter on our display. This whole display right here is running off a single circuit. So whether it's US, whether it's Europe, you know, we can run off a single circuit. So that's how much is the power that's used? Yeah, so that's that's 503 watts. That's that's less than half of a microwave. So a microwave oven is about 1200 watts. This is 500 on this content. Now, if we put on some brighter content, some white content, that's gonna go up to 800 watts or so, maybe 900, but it's still well below, 25% below a microwave oven. How's it compare with a very large LCD? Uh, you know, I have to be honest, I'm not sure. I think we beat it, but I, I don't wanna. They don't make so big. That's yeah. one of the things. Well, that's absolutely true. And one of the things that they run into with the very large LCDs, and actually this started back 10 years ago when Panasonic came out with their incredible 103 inch plasma. They don't fit in elevators, you know, and so you end up having to hire a crane. I right? even in Manhattan, I was seeing helicopters, helicopter those 103s in. It was an impressive <laughs> sight, 
right? But and it was a beautiful display. But there's some logistics issues that come up when you start going beyond 85 inches. It's like bringing a grand piano. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. It's huge. So, but you can modular. It's easy. Absolutely. You can bring in your hand, no, hand no luggage. Problem. Whatever size you want, we can do it, and um, and the logistics won't be as difficult. All right. So, so what's next? Okay. So next is actually something very similar to this. It's a one. That was a 1.2 that we just showed you. We were showing off some touch technology from a partner. This one's a 1.5, also with our Lisa, also with our proprietary driver chip. So really it's just showing off, and this has some uh, a partner uh, set of software on there as well. But uh, it's just showing some different pixel pitches for similar technology. All right, but I mean that next, like in terms of, uh, uh, what's next uh, technology? So for us, we're always looking on the back side of the board first, typically. Um, so we're, we're living inside the driver chip most of the time. So we're looking at reducing heat even further. We're looking at uh, increasing bandwidth even further. So it's going to be more bit depth. It's going to be cooler temperatures. Um, it's going to be uh, higher brightness. So all of those things to, to really enhance the image and really kind of try and realize the full potential of LED because we're how not did, even there yet. How does a driver help with the with heat and power consumption? All right, that's a very good question. Uh, so we drive our, our LEDs differently than most people. So we drive them what's called common cathode and the typical way is common anode. And when you have common anode, basically all the input voltages are the same, but the LEDs don't take the same voltages. Particularly red is a problem there. And so when you drive a common anode, you have to put a resistor on the red. Well, a resistor equals heat. We drive common anode, and what that means is we have the correct voltages going into all the LEDs and sync all that current on the, on the cathode side. And so we don't have that resistor. So that, that right there reduces heat. We've got a couple other little secret sauce things that reduce heat, but that's the big one. So every LED on this display, if we drove a common anode, every LED would have a resistor associated with it. Another trend that seems to be big is uh, uh, mini LED backlights for LCD displays. Yeah. Are you in this business? Uh, because I, I would we're guess not, they, but not we we have we've been talking to some potential partners on that. Because they probably have a challenge also keeping lower power consumption. So so the way you're right, uh, but. The benefit of a uh, common cathode really shows up uh, when you're driving all three colors, R, G, and B. Um, if you're just doing a single color backlight, like a lot of them are doing blue, uh, blue LEDs and doing kind of a quantum dot uh, type approach. And in that case, if you just do one color, you'll drive at the right voltage. So, so in our scenario for our driver, that isn't necessarily a benefit, but uh, we've got some other stuff that is a benefit to them. 